Luke, you recording? I am. All right. Guys, the Lego movie is coming up, and quite honestly, I've never seen a movie that made me quite as physically ill. The constant flashing and popping of the screen made me feel like that dude who likes the ultraviolence in Clockwork Orange. <laughs> and uh, it got me thinking about how Luke came up with the idea for this week's other nerd news. And it's about our favorite animated movies from our childhood. And as Mark and I usually do, immediately I couldn't just give one answer. I had to give two. And so it really kind of fundamentally comes down to what you consider childhood because when I was 17, I saw the greatest animated movie of all time, um, not named Spider-Man Into the Universe, and that was uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. It was one of the best movie to, movies I'd ever seen, a huge Batman fan at the time, and it did the character a great amount of justice, great performance by Mark Hamill, cool twist and climax. But we're talking about movies as kids. For me, my favorite it hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't, uh, Hasn't uh, stood up very well, but my favorite was the G.I. Joe movie. It had Don Johnson play Duke's half-brother, and Duke himself got put into a coma. And then they had, like, the bad guy, good guy team up with Roadblock and Cobra Commander. And Cobra Commander actually turns into a snake. And then who could forget Sergeant Slaughter and Tunnel Rat? And I just, I love that movie. I wore that that VHS tape out uh, watching it over and over again. And as I was thinking about my favorite animated movies of my childhood, I wanted to ask each of you about your favorite animated movies. So, like several this? several things have just happened here. For, first off, wasn't Burgess Meredith also what Globulus or what? Yes, he was. What was his name? What, was it? It was like Globulus something, wasn't it? Or yeah, uh, it was. Well, it was Globulus. Then there was also Nemesis and Force. Who looked exactly Batman. like Archangel. So when we used our GI Joe guys to play X Men, Arch uh, Nemesis and Forcer was always Archangel. Very true. He was purple. And then yeah, and then like some bug guys because I remember we but they had the three pack, and you yeah. got the three pack of like the Cobra Law guys, and I got yes. the three pack of Sergeant Slaughter's Beefcakes or whatever the hell those were, and being like, wow, this is another disappointment. <laughs> Whatever, dude, you had the Tunnel Rat came in then. Oh, did he? I did have Tunnel Rat, and you know what I remember about the Tunnel Rat toy is our dog Mackenzie chewed Tunnel Rat up, so we kept him because he was always the first guy to die then in all our battles because he looked like he was wounded. So, that was a... That was a, it was a good toughest. I, I'm glad you brought up uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. 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 Anyways, um... Because that changed my way of thinking, too, because I was originally thinking I was going to talk about uh, The Jungle Book, which was the movie I liked when I was a little kid. And I still enjoy it today. And I my kids watch it or whatever. And it's, you know, it's one of the Disney movies from that era that's the least racially offensive when you have to go back and rewatch it with your children. But what you actually made me think about when you brought up the Batman one is that I I love Ninja Scroll. And I watched that endlessly in high school, which is uh, an anime movie it's the same director who did vampire hunter d and demon city shinjuku and uh it's it's a you know it's feudal japan but they have some type of guns and technology and it's basically about a a samurai jubei who who is poisoned into helping these people kind of track down these seven devils that are kind of these super powered beings in feudal Japan. And basically they have to, to murder them all. And it's these giant elaborate battle sequences and these just super gory, violent deaths. And there's nudity and sex and, and rape, unfortunately in it or whatever. It's just a really violent movie, but it's, it's, I loved it, you know, in high school, I, I still watch it to this day every now and again. And um, don't ever rent the, the TV show on accident. Cause if you get that, that has, um, I'm just going to describe, especially for our listeners that maybe like Maya have strong Christian views, what the, the TV show is about. The TV show is about how Jesus is reborn in these times, but there's a, there's a catch to him. And the catch is that, you know, if, if a hor a horrible event comes, he could actually turn into like the super devil instead of turning into Jesus. So one of his priests who wants him to turn into the super devil uh, actually tricks him into believing that Jubei has killed all his, uh, his like children followers. So he, he goes to the evil side and the closing sequence of the first episode is, uh, Jesus 
vomiting blood while uh, this chick that I don't think he wants to is having sex with him, like, on top, and then they, they fade to credits. So skip the TV show, because I don't know what the fuck that was or what that's about, but the actual movie, Ninja Scroll, is one of the classic, you know, Japanese anime movies, and uh, I own it, and I love it. Wow. Okay. Well, um, we obviously have a very different uh, take on childhood here. Um, also, because I don't really think I was watching many cartoons at like 17, 18. I was really more getting into old movies at that time. And so I think whenever I was watching anything, it would be like Dirty Dozen or, um, you know, The Getaway or, or, you know, some Sam Peckinpah, like Wild Bunch or Straw Dogs. So I was watching a lot of cartoons at that time. Um, so when I was thinking about my childhood, um, I wanted to say Transformers, the movie, because let's be honest, how bad as is that movie? Not only the Stan Bush soundtrack and a drunken Orson Welles, but the fact that they basically murder every character, you know, from the good guys within the first 25 minutes. And they swear. Um, Robert Stack swears. Yes. Yes. And it's got a killer voice lineup. You know, again, Orson Welles, Leonard Nimoy, Robert Stack, Eric Idle, Judd Nelson, John Machida, the Micro Machines guy, the world's fastest talker. I mean, it, it, there's a lot going for that movie, but um, we never actually owned that movie. Uh, and so I didn't really get to watch it very much. I maybe only watched it once or twice as a kid. Um, so I was thinking about what movies did we watch a lot? And, and Luke, I'm a little surprised you didn't mention this because, of course, you know, being brothers, we both watched a lot of the same movies. And it was the um, Lord of the Rings cartoon two pack yeah. that we had, which um, I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with this, but in the eighties, um, Ralph Bashke, who did Fritz the cat wanted to do a Lord of the Rings adaptation. And so he made this cartoon, um, which I, we can get into the kind of the weird specifics of that in a minute, but obviously this is a huge sprawling epic, right? And he can't do the whole thing in one movie. So he does basically the first book, The Fellowship of the Rings, and the first half of The Two Towers, and that's movie one. But the problem is, is that United Artists, which was backing this movie, didn't want there to be a two-part movie. So after he made part one, they said, okay, great, that's the movie, and released it as The Lord of the Rings. So it just ends right in the middle of the story. And so, of course, they never had any intention of, of making the second half because the first one actually didn't do very well because people went in thinking they were going to see the whole story and only got half. So United Artists passed, and Ralph kind of moved on to other things. And so um, Rankin and Bass... Uh, uh, a more traditional animation house decided that they were going to make the second half, except what they did was they only made return of the King. So they basically <laughs> just skipped the entire second half of the two towers. So even though these movies are meant to be seen back to back, you're basically missing a, not a third, more like a, a sixth of the story right in the middle. And it's just really jarring because, of course, the animation styles are completely different. The character designs are different. The voices are different. Bankin and Rass made theirs a freaking musical. So you've got these musical numbers suddenly throughout, which I actually think the songs were kind of cool. But um, Well, the whole, the, whole, the whole Return of the King is actually told as a flashback that a minstrel is playing <laughs> to the people that were in the actual events of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still explaining. Oh, yeah, and it's just, it, it's incredibly charming. And so, and of course, we watched these movies before we'd ever read the books. So we, we had no idea that there was this whole giant gap missing in the story. But I mean, you know, for people familiar with it, you miss the resolution of the Ents and Saruman and, you know, how the Hobbits, uh, Merry and Pippin, get to meet the, you know, the... The remaining members of the fellowship it's just this horribly discordant thing but god i love those and we watch those i mean we watch those constantly and rankin and bass made a hobbit too so the hobbit was yeah. in the exact same style and lined up really well aesthetically with the return of the king and then 
the the Lord of the Rings, like you said, and not only was it just like different character designs and a different animation style, like it used real people for like the Black Riders and other like some of the background characters, like they kind of superimposed real people into it. Like it was a weird, it was a weird <laughs> movie on its own, let alone not fitting yeah, into I, these other two movies. I was actually looking into it, and it what happened was is that the whole thing is rotoscoped, which is basically where he. Bashki filmed the entire movie with live actors. And then what they did is they then frame by frame, they put animation cells over it and basically traced over the actors. But so sometimes if there's only one or two characters on the screen, there's more time to be devoted to that particular cell. And so they come out very cartoony and very bright. And then when you get a whole bunch of characters, like an army or, you know, just even seven or eight people interacting, then it's just this very dark, sketchy, you know, basically ink drawings over clearly real people. So, yeah, it, it's a very odd film entirely, but um, a really weird introduction to the story to begin with. But, God, well, yeah, I love those movies. My, love- you should definitely search that out because everyone knows that the Lord of the Rings trilogy is your favorite book and movie series of all time. Oh, I, really? Uh, I actually did see, um, I saw The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. We watched it in seventh grade, uh, our, our English class. So we didn't read the nice. book, thing, but we did watch the movies. <laughs> Mr. Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm sure that name never had any um, puns made about it. Uh, so you got to wonder why the man became a seventh grade teacher. <laughs> Oh, now I am. (laughs) Not a good idea. Because those who can do, those who can't teach, and those who can't teach, teach seventh grade. Oh, hopefully not everyone's listening to this. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, but... um, I uh, I recommend seeking them out. They're actually they're they're kind of fun movies, and it's a really weird way to to experience that story if that's your kind of thing. Always wanted to go back and watch those now that I've seen the just glorious epic that is Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, that I would like to go back and see what the animated what was all that hubbub about the animated. I bet they're more rewatchable than the Peter Jackson ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, I found well, them stupid originally. So well, and the first one, the Bashki one, actually did wind up kind of becoming an underground sort of cult movie that would occasionally have midnight showings, and the, the tapes would get passed around. And um, it, it has a better reputation, um, certainly than the Rankin and Bass ones do, which are uh, a lot more kind of straightforward, cartoony. Um, you can tell one was for kids and one was for adults. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, so there you go. Or, you know, just uh, get Transformers the movie. I think it might be on YouTube, actually. Um, Maybe right next to our video, in fact. Well, I I have it on DVD, so I don't need to worry about that. But now I kind of want to find G.I. Joe the movie and see. Because I think it's going to hold up, personally. I I watched it in, I want to say, 2002. And then I watched it again when I first got Netflix, when you could get the discs. And that would have been 2008. And I couldn't make it through it. Oh, no. No. Well. Uber, la, 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 now, la, I'm, la. now I'm sad that we just missed uh, Boom's birthday, because I think next birthday comes around. Old Uncle Luke's going to have to mail her out G.I. Joe the movie on <laughs> LaserDisc yeah. and see how no. it works. Did G.I. Joe the movie predate Serpentor? Or was... I think it introduced Serpentor. Yeah, it introduced Serpentor. I think it was, yeah, it was kind of, they, no. they used that to unveil, I thought, some some <laughs> sticking characters no. as well. No, Serpentor was like a, Serpentor was unveiled in like a five um, episode arc of the show where they had to go get DNA from like Genghis Khan and... Um, well, then why did you ask? And, <laughs> what? But, because I didn't know if that was before oh, the movie. Or oh, he's in the movie. Oh. That's what you're asking. Yeah, he's yeah. he's in the movie. Because they, they banished Cobra Commander, and then Serpentor is working with uh, Cobra Law, I believe. Is that correct, Maya? You believe or you know? I believe, but Maya saw it in 2008, so he probably knows. 
Well, I saw it most recently, like all the way through in 2002. I will say that Boom is the personification of Lady J in real life. So I think that would be an excellent choice. Wait, wait. You mean so her her only mission in life is to be Flint's girlfriend? No, she's got like a cool voice and she's bubbly in the life of the party like Lady J. So why don't you fuck off, buddy? <laughs> All right, so now now I've actually pulled up G.I. Joe the movie on IMDb just so I can go through the cast list and see if Serpentor is, is listed. Okay. Serpentor was in the damn movie. Oh, so, so's Wetsuit. I had a wetsuit. <laughs> he was very lame. Yep, Tunnel Rat. Serpentor. Dick Gautier. Voice Ooh. Serpentor. Um, he was also... The voice of Rodimus Prime on the TV show version of Transformers. Oh, they couldn't get Judd Nelson for the TV show? Apparently not. Because he was doing so much? He was also uh, voiced the character of Oki Pinehead on Captain Planet and the Planeteers. And I think on that note, Maya, you need to get us out of here. Where can they find you, boys? Luke? Oh, I want to hear Mark go first, because I feel like that could be another 15 minutes. Oh, well, there's not that much to it, but um, Twitter suspended my last account, so you can now reach me at Mark underscore Nitzel23. So, you know, now we're matchy-matchy. Is your account? Well, they locked me out of it, yeah, and um, I can't get back into it, and I'm not going to fight with them, so I am just started a new one. Why? Um, what happened? Well, basically, it, some, it, we're in a converse, I was in a conversation with people, and some you know, troll came in and started spewing off some misogynistic bullshit. And so I made a joke about how this guy, yeah, he's coming in here all badass, but you know he's got a headless pick of his dick that he's going to be sliding into everybody's DMs. And apparently he reported me as threatening to dox him with, you know, blackmail pictures or something like that. And so they suspended my account. And then they said, okay, if you want to get back in, you need to answer this email. But they wouldn't send me the email no matter how many times I clicked. You didn't send this to me or, Hey, try this. They never gave me the link to get back in. So it's still technically there, but I'm locked out of it. So I'm like, eh, I'm not going to waste that much time. I'd spend more time now telling you about it than I have actually, you know, trying to get that thing back up and activated. And, you know, so it's a new one at Mark underscore nights. two, three. It's an end of an era. Luke. I'm at Luke underscore nights. still there. And I'm at Maya Madrid. I can't remember the last time I checked it, but I want to remind everybody here that all together we're kids seriously and yo, Joe. See you.